What happens when you react fluorine with potassium chloride? Well, fluorine itself is F2, commonly found as a gas at room temperature, and potassium chloride is a solid at room temperature, although you can also find it dissolved in water. That would mean AQ here. What I want you to see is that you have a single element here and then a compound here. I'll write that down for you, but what I'm trying to emphasize is that this is a single displacement reaction where this single element will take the place of one of the elements in this compound. F and Cl are both non-metals, so the F is likely to take the place of the Cl. Now you need to look this up on what's called the activity series. The activity series for halogens is maybe not even given to you as a separate table because it's exactly as found on the periodic table. F is the most reactive, Cl is next, Br is next, I is next, I've never seen a teacher go past that, but acetatine is next, and I think there's a new one down here, tenosine is last. Super radioactive doesn't exist, whatever. So, when fluorine, the more reactive element, reacts with this compound, the fluorine takes the place of chlorine because it's higher in the list. So, you're going to have potassium bonded with F, it's going to give you KF, and then the Cl will be on its own. That gives you Cl2. All of the halogens as pure elements have a little two underneath their diatomic molecules. Chlorine at room temperature is a liquid. You could probably get away with, no, it's a gas. It's a gas, it's bromine that's the liquid. My bad. And then this potassium fluoride is probably also a solid. Unless this was AQ, then say that this is AQ as well. There you go. The point is a single element will displace a similar element in the compound as long as it's higher in the activity series. Cool? Cool, that's single displacement. That's all you need to do. The end. Peace.